In this Adobe Rush Beginners editing tutorial, I'm going to guide you through the basic editing process, taking out all of those fluff lines and embarrassing pauses. And we're going to look at the basic functionality within Adobe Premiere Rush itself. And also critically though, the editorial thought processes behind creating effective and engaging business videos. If you're someone who has just started out on your video creating journey and you maybe have some footage on your phone or your camera and you're wanting to make sense of it in the edit this is the perfect tutorial for you practical tips on the editing functionality of adobe premiere rush but more importantly insights into why you want to do certain things within the editing process to make sure that your videos perform the very best they can let's jump in right now to the content so once i boot up uh, adobe rush um, I find myself here, which is sort of like the project area, uh, for want of a better expression. Top left here, it's create a new project, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to actually take you through a, uh, a live job. So this next panel shows me all of the video assets and whatnot that I've got on my system. So I need to go and find the particular bits of raw footage that I want to import into this particular project, which for the sake of this exercise is this one here. So as soon as you select it, you get a number one. Now, if you're shooting on location uh, on your phone or whatever, you may have multiple clips uh, that will be associated with the same project. So uh, for me, because I'm shooting a head and shoulders thing and I tend to do it in one long take, that's why I'm only gonna have one thing that I select here. But most probably for most projects, you'll have multiple clips. So you'll just go through and select the clips that you want to import into the project that are associated with the video that you're making. So to recap, I have just pressed on the footage that I want to import and then bottom right down here you've got a create button which I will press and then rush says it's preparing the media and then it will take us into the actual editing functionality itself here we are it's loading itself up now nicely uh, so just a very quick kind of roundup of the functionality in this the work space I suppose you call it uh, so this here is the timeline now actually this is representative of an awful lot of editing uh, packages um, most of them feature a timeline like this and basically for the sake of this particular exercise what I'm going to be doing is um, topping and tailing is what it's called so i.e choosing the particularly good takes and taking out any pregnant pauses or any time that I mess up uh, what I'm saying and um, so that I'm left with a sequence of good takes and then at that point on the timeline uh, normally then what you then do is to arrange them into an order that makes sense now in my case I script my videos so I've already created the narrative at the writing stage but if you were filming something a little bit more on the hoof or off the top of your head then what you could then do in at this moment is to arrange the narrative. So make sure that what you're talking about makes sense. Take anything out that doesn't really add anything to the conversation. The bottom line with editing really here in, in, in with this kind of uh, material is to make sure that you're constantly condensing the value uh, so that you're not wasting your audience's time. So in terms of the uh, timeline there, you've obviously got the images at the top and then underneath this is the sound so you can see where i've paused and retaken stuff so actually that makes it a lot easier to get in there with the editing scissors um, and you know make a cut point there and take bits out that i don't want just to reiterate for the purposes of this project this is a proper entry level editing 101 just making sense and nipping and tucking in a very basic way which is where I would suggest that if you're only just starting on your video creating journey this is where you would start and then in following videos I will then detail things like how to add graphics how to put music underneath to really sort of polish up your uh, end video results talking heads videos like this I would suggest are a really really good way of starting out on your video creating journey it's a really good format of video to get practiced delivering your content to your audience it's a relatively simple thing to set up in terms of shooting you just need one camera and one light i've done other videos about the kind of video setup side of things which i'll link to in the description below so let's actually 
get into this footage and start trimming all the naughty bits out so that we're left with something that is much more polished. The first thing I'm going to do is press the plus key on my keyboard just to expand the, um, to magnify the timeline because it's a lot easier to see. Like you can see the massive air gap there. So that's a big pause. I say something, then there's a big pause there. I'm just going to get in and find out where I actually start talking. I'm going to give you a real kind of behind the scenes look. This is obviously me setting the camera up, getting myself ready. Uh, yeah, absolutely wafting the microphone into its right place. Being a business owner or entrepreneur can be a lonely place. There you go. So that was my first effort. Uh, it didn't last very long. Uh, I can see then there's another um, gap down here. So obviously did a retake. So first of all, I just need to click. So I'm basically clicking on the um, timeline here and then I can drag. And you see it's just allowing me to uh, take all of that stuff out. Um, and then automatically, like you saw, it, it automatically shunts everything to the left so that you're, you know, you're starting where you want to. Let's just have a little sense check. Being a business owner or an entrepreneur can... That's great. The thing to um, bear in mind right at the beginning is you want to dive in, you want to attract the viewer's attention as soon as possible. So what you don't want is any pregnant pause before you start talking. At the same time, you need to be careful that you don't clip any of the words so it you know still makes sense and there's still a sense that it's you know a human talking. That's the thing when you're taking pauses out. Uh, on one level, it's brilliant because it means it keeps the pace of the video up. But at the same time, you need to be a little bit aware that if you take every single pause out, it can lead to sort of almost like a robotic delivery because you're never pausing for breath. So the way that I work is I'll take the majority of pauses out, but I always do leave a few in just so it feels a little bit more naturalistic. 2021, 59%. I sort of stumble there and lose my place. So actually, I need to scrub along a little bit here. Let's see what this, see if this is a retake. I think it probably is. Being a business owner. Exactly. So actually, the beginning intro section of the whole piece is actually down here. So let's do that. And then let's do another sense check. It is absolutely vital, I, I find, whenever you do, especially when you're starting out editing, to... Um, sort of verify that each edit makes sense in this you know what you don't want is like I say to clip what you're saying or there to be a real clunky transition from one thing to the next so as a, as a rule of thumb I always go back and play the edit that I've just made just to check that it, it looks okay and it sounds okay so let's do the same with this obviously this is now the intro the new intro being a business owner or and that's fine we're straight in there's a little tiny tiny micro pause just before we start so it's not too in your face as, a, as an introduction so all in all i'm pretty happy with that there's a little bit of an odd moment here which i'll share with you and we'll work out what to do so with it the global population is online in this i almost stumble but there's a there's a weird little bit of air in there which i want to take out just to make sure that it sounds a little bit normal uh, in in the mix and you can see as I'm sort of um, expanding the view by pressing the plus key on my keyboard uh, that actually yeah there's a couple of bits of air in there a couple of pauses so what I'm going to do I put the playhead where I want to cut that I come along here to the uh, scissors like that and then I can come across move the playhead to the next bit of speech scissors and then I click on that bit the bit that I want to get rid of, return, and then I'm, let's just see what that sounds like, because I don't, as I say, there's there's bits of air either side of it, So I, but I don't want it to sound unnatural, so let's see uh, what this looks like now. 59.5% of the global population is online. In the same report, they revealed... You see, that is a prime example of where it you need to leave a little gap because effectively it's the end of a sentence so if I took the second bit of air out it would feel like I'm rushing into my next sentence so here we have another likely looking section so let's just uh, see what happens uh, here three central tenets to any successful digital marketing campaign video marketing and video vid oh. there you go see there was a fluff so uh, what I need to do is go back and find 
a really good what's called an out point. What I tend to do when I make a mistake if I'm recording is um, I'll just spool back a couple of paragraphs on the uh, porter prompt and then I'll get my pace back to get into the section that I then you know I originally made the mistake in so hopefully by the time that I'm getting to that that section my rhythm's the same as it was before. So in terms of when you're in the edit, what I need to do is work out what I started, where I actually came back in. So let's have a listen to that. Video marketing fundamentally is the... So video marketing fundamentally. So then what I need to do is go and find the first time that I say that. So let's have a look there. A bonus way of working out where the first time I said a particular uh, phrase or sentence is that you can use the kind of patterns of the sound to find a similar graph. So obviously this is my retake version and it's similar, it looks similar here. So I'm hoping that this is the section that we want. So let's have a look. Video marketing. Yeah, excellent. So basically from here, so actually what we wanna do is put our scissors in there and then go all the way to where I say video marketing. Video marketing for the Yeah, there you go. So that'll be the in point. So I get my scissors in there, click on the scissors, and then I highlight the area that I want to lose. So all of that stuff, that was where I went wrong. All of that needs to go. So let's take that out. So let's do a quick sense check. Stick about and we'll get you going on your own business video creating journey. Video marketing fundamentally. Yeah, that's absolutely fine in terms of the audio. Uh, it, it makes sense. Because obviously we're cutting from a shot of me, head and shoulders, talking to you like this. And then we're cutting to another shot of me talking to you. What you end up with when you chop something out is what's called a jump cut. So it cuts from one shot back to the same shot just later on in time. So let's just have another look at that. Business video creating journey. Video marketing. So there's a slight jar. Now in broadcast TV, a jump cut is kind of a no-no, but fortunately, because of the nature of YouTube and because of the fact that it's called user-generated content, i.e. this is content that we're making ourselves, uh, actually, in the grammar of things, it's absolutely fine to have jump cuts. And in some circumstances, actually, it's a way of, of re-engaging and sort of it's known as a pattern interrupt because it's slightly jarred. Something's changed in frame and that will uh, re-engage the viewer's attention. So certainly when you're starting out, I wouldn't worry about having jump cuts in your editing. In TV land, when we have a jump cut, what we would then do is go away and look for other footage or another camera angle to paste over that particular jump cut so that you're either cut to an alternative camera angle and then you'll come back to this camera angle. Or if you're talking about something and you can illustrate it with other footage, which is known as B-roll, and we'll come on later in a following video to talk about B-roll and where you can source it, how you can create it yourself, and how you can use it to really finesse your videos. But really for what we're trying to achieve right now on this project at this sort of entry level of editing, having a jump cut in there is absolutely fine because really what you need to be con concentrating on as an editor right now is the content. Is it making sense? Is it pacey? And is it engaging? That should be what you're concentrating on right now rather than always oh, there's a few jump cuts in it because frankly we can prettify things later on. The main thing with video is to make sure the content is absolutely on the money. I've now gone through and taken out all of the bits where I mess up my lines, all of the pregnant pauses and all of that stuff. And you end up on your timeline here with lots of little sections all bolted together. And that, that for what we're doing is absolutely fine. So once you're happy with the content, uh, the next thing to do obviously is to export it uh, and save it out. So we do that in Premiere Rush by clicking up here on the share button. You need to then obviously give it a file name, video to you then in this area here, it's where do you want to save it to? It tells you the estimated file size. So that's just about a gig. You've got some advanced settings here, but to be honest, when you're starting out, just leave these as they are. So once we're happy with all our settings and whatnot and where it's being saved out to the video, we come down here and we press export. Then Premiere Rush tells us it's rendering. It tells you how long left before it's finished. 
it obviously tells you where it's saving it out to too. So with the magic of Tele, suddenly it's all rendered and the finished file is ready for us to have a look at. You can play it there. It obviously tells you where it saved the file out to and you can view where it's put the file here by clicking on view in Finder. Obviously there's a very helpful uh, blue lozenge down here saying done, telling you that it's all good to go. I really hope you found this video useful, a really elementary guide to getting yourself going on your video creating journey by basic editing techniques, just nipping and tucking and making sure that your videos make sense and are superb in terms of the content delivery. Make sure you click on the video on screen now because I'm going to go back in and we're going to go to the next stage. We're going to try and get rid of some of those jump cuts by using B-roll. What is B-roll? Where can you get stock footage to use as B-roll? All of that goodness coming up on this video so definitely click on that in a second in the meantime thanks ever so much for watching hope you got loads of value from it if you have give us a thumbs up that would be fantastic take care 